mapin. Eka lo eni temi ogu komi ni ilaya sadi dino. Moje awako ni ogi oko ivi nautilus. Modeje omo ileiwe ileiwe agba ni university ati New Hampshire ni ilu US. Um, mude lo mude fengo kini ma wole ati kini ma de wami eshe gongo oni fengi. Nice, excellent. Bonjour, je m'appelle Trevor. <laughs> je suis fatigué et Hercules. Very nice. <laughs> nice. I wasn't expecting that, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, like it, it does wonders, you know. <laughs> right out of pocket. Um, it's Cochil, uh, Annabelle, Sinasnat, uh, Yatsun, uh, Al, 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 uh, Atlanta. Um, uh, Hiluxan, uh, Yat, at the Evie Nautilus, um, uh, out the Evie Nautilus, son, uh, Yat, Yat, son, uh, Oregon State University, uh, undergraduate, um, Yat, Tuchlach, a beeves. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> what language is that? It's uh, my Coast Salish language. Oh. Um, Amish is my language. That's so um, cool. That's awesome. Good to, that's good yeah. to know. Cool. I can't top that. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Robertson, lead video engineer on this expedition, uh, sitting in the video seat. Uh, and... Uh, that's it. <laughs> Is it okay if I try my second language one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If uh, Rob a colony, then do while, watch lead, Ooh. else, geologic lead, go to URI, and if. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. You wrote that down, too. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> which, which shell did you use to write it down? Uh, okay, we can start moving along now. See? Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yeah, that's us. Um, can we zoom before so you want moving yes, in, in yes this? We can. Just due east, right? I think we want to go due east. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Five zero meters? Sure. Bridge nav. Can we have a zoom on the white thing, please? Can we please step five zero meters bearing zero nine zero degrees, same speed? Eh. Ugh. Roger, yeah. thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Mount no worries, it's okay, thank you. That's the first in a while, isn't it? Yeah. Chris and Gorgia with no squat? All right, thank you, come on. <laughs> third one. Well, we, they were uh, seeing several. Okay. I was wondering if that was, could be different. So we're currently at a depth of 1,944 meters. We started this dive at about 2,500 meters and we made our way up this elongated, uh, this ridge of an elongated yield that is extending from the northwestern edge of the Johnson Atoll, like the actual atoll. Um, and we're, this is gonna be the last watch of the dive, so we're spending the next few hours exploring um, this uh, shallower depth, and then we'll head up later in the watch. So we're not going for the summit? I don't know, are we? I mean, it's a really broad, flat thing. Oh yeah, boring. Boo. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll go a little bit farther. I mean, if we go into the middle, it's just going to be sediment. Yeah, okay. 
even if that's a biological interest, we can do that. Chat wants to know if any of us caught that huge sponge and the awesome ridge earlier on the dive. I was asleep. Maybe Sleepy. not. We had a great um, first watch of this dive, though. We were um, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. We had a great time. Glad to see the corn dogs are back or still around. Star. Yeah, Did star. Yeah, let's see that thing. That's cool. Ooh. It looks like it's nominal. It's a on big something. It's thick. Is it munching on that coral there? Can we zoom on the star, please? Oh, wow. Look at it in the center of him. There's also a fish. Is it on the end of that? Wow. You think you started the base, buddy? I guess not. <laughs> Weighing it down. Is it on a? No, it's on the coral itself, isn't yeah. it? It's hovering off the ground. Yeah. Those are predatory sea stars. Is that what? a shrimp in its grasp too? You can't tell. Yeah, it looks like something red. I don't know if it's a stomach though. Oh, it might be a stomach. Yeah. I wonder if I can get a little closer. Let's see. I think it's a shrimp. Wow. Is that its stomach on the shrimp? Could be. Brutal. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not looking to grab a rock at the moment, but Maranke, well, how are we with potential space? Wow, wild. Okay, this thanks for nice oh, on the on you. Um, yeah. We could do a small rock in starboard bio box B or D. Okay. Maybe Bravo, F Delta. as well. Okay. Thank you. Let's do a little side look here, see what we're up against. Ooh. Wow. It's very exciting. Wow. Yeah, I like. That's a big sponge. I have, uh, hmm. there's no altitude beneath me. Atalanta also has no altitude. Zero Maybe a hundred meters, but. A, it's a wall. It's definitely a wall. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Not a cliff. Oh, could be a cliff, you know? Could be a cliff wall. A wall cliff. Hmm. So we keep having the sponges that we saw in the previous watch. The squirrel. Squirrel. It's, it's cool back. Yeah, it's right there. And the kebab sponge. Mm hmm. What's that red squishy? Red squishy is where? Um, this right. One? Uh, no, up. Ah. That looks like a coral. Oh, up, up there? Yes. All right, let's go find out. Oh my gosh, there's three of them. Three oh, sponges. Big giant sponges. Sponges. Yeah, probably polyogon sponges. Is this a, a blind lobster? No. Can you zoom in on the blind lobster? No. Maybe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blind lobster, yes. Blind lobster. Blind lobster, yeah. This is um, nice. crustacean in the family Polychelida. Those uh, blind lobster lobsters are relatives of the spiny lobsters. Wow. And. Um, there are around 40 species distributed worldwide, only deep sea species. And they're like cool. super predatory, right? They have the... Thank you. People yeah. say they have those like spooky looking claws that shoot out and grab things. Spooky. Yeah. Chat once said they're like nightmare fuel. <laughs> you had a fish in the cinema can. Yep. Ways away though. Far away fish. The sponges just keep getting bigger and bigger. They yeah, like you being here. Do you see that hint of a big one in um, both Zeus yeah. and Atalanta? That's, That's what like I was looking at. Like, it's one big sponge. Um, for those Wait. of you watching at home, the cinema cam is on channel three. 
it's a, a newer camera that we have that um, has like a cool worm's eye view almost of everything. Worm's eye view, I love it. <laughs> it's on that big uh, aret, 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 that's the word. Oh my gosh, they just keep going down. Look at this one that's dead on the top and alive on the base. It's interesting. That one's like budding little sponges off of it. Yeah. There's so many squats here, Paula. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's so diverse, this spot with sponge. And look at this nice chrysogortis coral. Faraday sponges, primnoids. Wall of corals we, here. We may be interested in Niskin. Well, I was just going to ask if Meredith, I was going to say, Meredith, if you're online and you want a Niskin around here, just let us know. Bridge, no. I'm going to try to figure out which way the current's going. So I know if we should be above or below. Sim, 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 please. Thank you. Annabelle Chat saying that those sponges that we're seeing now, the big ones, they saw even larger ones earlier in the dive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that overhang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, a little so jelly. Oh, there it goes. Looks like the current is coming up the wall versus falling over the top. Mm. I mean, this is actually a nice view I'm, for the people here. You can see there's a crack here, and there's yeah. a crack up there. So at some point, this is going to fall away like much of the rest of this area oh. has. Do you think if I land really hard, it'll do it? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what causes these cracks and eventual falling? What kind of forces are well, it's, it's, on this? Well, I mean, gravity is a big one here, of course, but uh, you can just get weathering of the rocks, and there may be uh, pre-existing weaknesses in the flow that you start to get some water circulating down through these areas, these little mini faults. Can we do the next move kind of 45 degrees that way? What is that, 135? And they, they become Thanks. zones of weakness, and at some level, sometimes become almost lubricated or overpressured. So they actually just can plop off on their own. Are you trying to get away from the wall? Trying to get closer. Closer oh, to okay, it. Okay, closer. Chat wants to know what constitutes a coral reef. An assemblage of corals. Shallower corals though, right? Or could it could it could there be a deep we sea coral we reef? We will discuss in the, the way the Steve because yeah, coral reefs are um, considered like basically hermatypic corals that that, uh, that are these with the hard skeleton uh, mm -hmm. uh, that are Bonk. capable to, to oh, build no. big uh, reefs, several species. But um, we are we are finding in the deep sea also coral communities that are very dense, even if they are gorgonians or soft corals. So. But, but I think they're thinking about here, these are the coral reefs that are uh, shallow sorry, water. I to say one, three, five. Oh. Yes, I was confused. Yeah, Where these thanks. could be communities and you wouldn't get much of a thickness, I don't think, accumulating to create these sorts of coral reefs that we're thinking about for the tops of atolls. Yeah, and, and with the coral, shallow coral reefs, when they die, they kind of just build on top of each other, right? Yep. Look at this, this is beautiful. And there's a uh, very likelihood we'll see one tomorrow our next dive. That's Why? so exciting. Yeah. We could probably do a shallower dive on the eastern side of uh, Johnston, which is being considered now. And for those of, you, awesome. those of you at home watching, the next dive will be a very special one. Can we do a zo quick zoom in one of these colonies? It'll yep. Be uh, doesn't have to be quick. It does have to be bad lighting, though, probably. No worries. Yeah. We're looking up at it. Uh, okay, zoom in here, please. That 
That sponge looks like a morel. It does. Like the land, the land mushroom. Yeah. Yeah. The little tiny one did. That are like. Thank you. That if you find them, you can like make good money off of them. Thank you. The morels. Yeah, I mean. Or eat them. Eat them. Yeah, tasty. Yeah, so the next dive will be Herc's 1,000th dive. So it's a celebration here. H2K. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anniversary. Which, I was thinking about that word in my head, anniversary. It doesn't really match it either. It's more like a... Like a milestone, like a dival stone. Dival stone. <laughs> dival stone. Uh, oddly enough, I was thinking the same thing. Not dival stone, but not di a diversary is not really. Yeah. I guess it isn't right. Yeah, because you're not doing laps <laughs> around the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I like dival stone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's make it happen here on the ship. <laughs> dival stone. Dave, we're getting questions in the chat about the cinema cam. Would you be able to kind of explain it a little more? I don't know an awful lot about it. Uh, it's an experimental uh, camera that uh, we're just trying out, uh, ringing out some of the, uh, the bugs uh, on how to control it, that kind of stuff. Uh, the uh, uh, control software is uh, not quite ready for prime time. The, uh, company that uh, made it is uh, still working on it, so we're trying some things out and giving them feedback. So it's an experiment. Let's zoom on um, this pink thing, please. Zooming pink thing. It's uh, a 6K imager, a uh, 35 millimeter type imager, so large format, high resolution. Uh, what you're seeing is the scaled down down uh, rest version of it. Uh. Right, thank you. Yeah, and th someone in the chat asked if it was a, let me scroll down, if it was a, um, they asked if it was a close-up view of channel one, and it's not really that. It's that the cinema cam is situated on Hercu Hercules a lot lower than the Zeus cam is, so it's just it's like a different field of view. It's also like kind of going straight out instead of like tilting. Right. It's fixed. Uh, the angle is fixed. It's down on the porch, so it's lower. Uh, and that's uh, just out of convenience. It's uh, a, a good place to put it. That's Whereas, it right uh, there. And there it is. A little black shroud poking yeah. out. Looks like it's poking over the edge of the porch slightly. Turn on the porch light just a little bit there. Yeah. So got it? There it is. There it is. Mm. Hi, Cinema Cam. So it's, uh, it's fixed. Uh, view it has some uh, zoom capability, but not the not to the extent that the uh, Hurt camera does. Uh, and like I said, it's fixed right? not on a pen. Ah, sure. uh, yeah, sure. Like the Hurt camera is. Yeah, and Please. if you look at the quad view, you can see them kind of like stacked on top of each other, side side by side. Um, and you can see that there's a difference in the view. Can we please the five zero meters viewing one three five degrees? Is that a squat? Same speed. Where is the squat? In the stock. Ah. An interesting question. How much of the light sediment is biological in origin? How else can it be produced? Can we zoom in on the squats, please? I think all of it's a biological origin. Yeah, so there's not sand down here, like on the beaches, right? No. Nothing terrigenous here. There would be very, very little. Ooh, the only three. thing that would get here Thank you. is uh, aeolian Four. windblown. Four, yeah. This looks like a cool. freeze-framed squat fight. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, so the sediment comes a lot from the marine snow settling, right? Yep. 
Correct. So when we did the uh, push cores, we found it was quite sandy and not able to take them very easily. What's going on with that? Well, that that's sand by particle size, not you know uh. composition size. Everybody e equates sand with like silica, like on the beach. But uh, uh. this is sand size by bio biological material. I see. Are shells Mostly. ground up? Are they? Are those not silica? Well, no. Silica is. Uh, I mean, quartz is silica. These are uh, calcium carbonate or oh, okay. uh, aragonite, still a, a form of calcium carbonate. I have a zoomed-in picture of some of the sediment here. Oh, like microscope shot? Yeah. Don't want to do Whoa, distracted what? driving. It looks like chickpeas. Yeah, it's like lentils or, or something. Lentils. <laughs> Pretty cool. Do a hummus core. Mm. Um, someone else in the chat asked, are those small round white spots baby sponges? I'm not entirely sure what small round white spots you're talking about because there are some small sponges, but there's also those uh, hold fast. They're called um, like attachments, like the, the pedunk. The um, rest of the attachment of yeah. the sponges on, on corals that at some point fell, fell down. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there are some small, like, wavy things that attach that are much smaller that are biological. I saw Steve plucking some off a rock when we were bringing them up. down a little bit here? Yeah, Chad, I guess it depends on what you mean by small, round, white spots. Can you be more descriptive, like squishy or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is gorgeous stuff. I mean, overall, there's just a lot on this cliff getting kind of close in Atalanta. Close to the wall? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you're pretty far away. We just, right. I just moved the ship closer. You're about 40 Roger. meters away. Just saw some lines on the sonar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's Herc. Herc's close. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> How can you tell Herc's um, close? <laughs> can we zoom in here? Yes, we can. On the yellow thing? Yep. Yeah, sure. Can you come down on Delta, please? Roger. All right, go ahead and zoom, please. This Pyram is it zoanthids or pyramid? It looks, looks like, like zoanthids. Yep. Yeah. Steph, can you see the sonar now? Like, that's what um, um, Trevor was explaining yesterday. All right. Yeah. yeah. Come because wide, we are so close to it now, it's like um, yellow and, um, I can a, a, and purple, and you see less of blue. Yeah, I was looking at that. So the one on the on the right on the right is Herc, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a very yes great example of the the lines you guys are talking well, about. Yeah. And you can even in Atlanta, you can see the darkness start with a line and then the blue over top. That means we're looking at the very top. Well, we're looking at what we're looking at. We're looking at the very yeah. top right angle, almost corner at the top of the wall. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the inner circle for. Hercules is 10 meters, and you can see that we are about maybe 5 meters away from the, the wall. It's really cool. Yeah. Chad's asking if they can see those sediment pictures anywhere. Uh, it's on my Instagram, uh, and I think, I think Nautilus reposted it at one point. I don't know. Somebody did. Um, my Instagram is not an orca, N O T dot A N dot O R C A. Um, not an orca. I made the account in like middle school because I wanted to share <laughs> pictures of ocean animals and fun facts. That weren't orcas. That weren't orcas, no. That's the whole point. You don't want to look at orcas. I think there might be one orca picture on there. But <gasps> Lies. Lies. Um, <laughs> It's slowly devolving into a geology account now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> devolving. Uh, like, if you go back at the very beginning, there's, like, pictures of sea otters and, like, you know, seals and stuff. And now it's just rocks. <laughs> so, I don't know. Rob, Rob is taking over. <laughs> She's seen the light. <laughs> um, I'll put some animals back on there soon. And I just reshared it on my stories if people Can follow we me zoom too. Here if yeah. It's not too late. It's not too late. 
Uh, okay, zoom in there, please. Squat lobster. Yeah, it, it seems something different, but uh, now I can see it's same similar. Just the thing. regular old squatty. Is there a regular yeah. All right, thank you. Living on Christ of Origin. Annabelle, I think your mom said something to you in your um, your language, your Salish language, was it? Oh boy, uh, what does it say? I Are there sevens in it? There's sevens in it, yeah. Yeah, that's my mom. Or <laughs> maybe one of my other relatives. They said mama after. Oh. So. Pretty uh, good hint then. Yeah. I will... <laughs> now it's the M, mama, nestlitz, anak. Uh, I'll show it to you eventually, but I'm not even going to try. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we do east now? Yes, thank you. SCF. <laughs> So what, what does a seven represent? Is that another character? Or? This can we do five zero meters bearing zero nine zero degrees, same speed. Right, yeah. Rob was wondering what the seven represents. Oh, the seven, uh, it represents a glottal stop. Um, so it's, that's, it's not like a sound, it's just sort of like a stop sign for your mouth. Um, have you ever heard anybody speak with like a Cockney accent? And like, if they'll say like, bo -o -o, yeah. like it kind of represents like the stops. Okay. Can we zoom in on this pink thing, please? I wonder if they collected these, seem different from... Hello, Steve. Well, we, we will see more, and Steve is in the chat, and following the dive. No associates? No. Are you one little thing up there? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Chat's wondering how many languages are spoken on the ship. I think there's like a lot. Plenty, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear Steve? Also, for those of you listening, uh, yep. um, we do ship to shore interactions and we'll do them in any language we can speak on the ship. So. And some we can't. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, someone, if you, if you speak a language and maybe ask if we speak it on the ship, we could do a ship to shore interaction. Unfortunately, there is no Coast Salish word at the moment for ROV. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's a floaty in the cinema cam that's... Yeah, and the Zeus cam too. Yeah. You, you get that, Dave? What do you think? Oh, yeah. It's a red floaty. Ooh. Tina 4? It looks like. It's on its way somewhere. Yeah, beautiful. It looks like a red Tina 4. What's a Tina 4? They're a good for all sorts of things. A Tina 4 is, uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's known as com jelly. Oh, okay. It's, um, so a type of jellyfish? It's a phylum that includes animals that are, uh, that has like characteri characteristically com of cedar, of hairs. Mm -hmm. It's not a jellyfish because Jellyfish are Nidarians and <coughs> Tinophores are another phylum. Oh, okay. But they look this gelatinous and mostly pelagic. Are they 
usually in the deep sea? Like, is there any Yeah, you can find ones? them in the deep sea, yeah. and there are some benthic species as well that we have seen living on the, on the sponges. Yeah. In, mm. in Narragansett Bay, there's a species, uh, Nemeopsis ladii, that is, starts to become more uh, popular right now. They get a bit of a bloom in September and October. And what we do is we go out at night for a kayak paddle and they iridesce when disturbed. So you kind of, when you're paddling, they start to glow as you go through the water at night. So it's pretty spectacular. This is a That's fair cool. day. Beautiful far right there. Probably because there is a mess and some, some researchers are calling this Farrea and some other Sastias Copulia. This one's getting into the territory of chair, like that big one we saw yeah. a couple dives ago. A 1960s chair or something. Like, yeah. like Game of Thrones chair? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Papa's on chair. Papa's on chair. Game of Thrones chair. Yeah, it still looks like sheet blows and lavas up here. Typical. Well, that's been pretty pervasive. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> uh, we have an ROV question. Um, question about the claw arm. Is each joint controlled independently, or does it use inverse... Um, kinematics? Kinematics for claw placement and alignment. Do you want to take that on? Um, it's it's controlled with like a little model of itself, basically, um, and it can do all seven functions, uh, sort of together. I'm not very good with terminology, uh, but it yeah, it can do all its little functions together, um, whilst whilst it's being used. Um, we have another arm on the ROV uh, called Magnum that actually does have each fun function independently um, and is controlled like with buttons on our GUI. Big fish coming up, kind of be in like the top Big center. Big fish. There it is. There you go. Let's have a fish zoom, please. Oh, we both stopped at the same time. <laughs> there we go. Cusk eel. Barbels down. It's a nice view. Oh, excellent oh, job. It's oh. face. <laughs> well, that's like the most extreme close-up I've seen of these. What's the little white thing above his fin there? It's the back of his head. <laughs> That's a very detailed shot. Yeah. <laughs> I like its barbels going in and out. That's a scar. Yeah, I'll let him go. Thank you. Thanks. Um, to further that manipulator question, the starboard manipulator is spatially correspondent. So we're not doing up here doing re inverse kinematics in our heads. That's, but the designers have solved it so that when you move the controller uh, in a certain way, it moves all the joints in the exact same way on the subsea, the remote arm. So if you move uh, the Almost the exact same way. Almost the exact same way. If you line up the joints in the same orientation and you move the end effector vertical on the controller, it'll move the remote arm totally vertical as well, We're moving all the other joints in exactly the right amount to make that happen. So what would reverse keep going east. kinematics? Yeah, you yeah. can keep going east. What would reverse kinematics be? Inverse kinematics are a way to calculate uh, position, no. forces, etc. based on same, same, same movements east. of multiple joints, basically. So it's it's mathy. 
I mean, it's, it almost looks like Zeus is positioned horizontally the wrong way. Looks yeah. like up is to the left. <laughs> yeah, we mounted it in down. portrait mode, but the video system can't <laughs> handle it, so <laughs> my neck's pretty sore, but. <laughs> Chat is asking if there's a word of the day, um, and I haven't had one yet, but I'll think of one. Okay, and there will kinematics? be one of the day. No. Boitroidal. <laughs> mm, it will never be boitroidal. Oh. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Can we zoom if this button Yeah, Holothurian, top right corner. We're going to ignore that. Mm. Annabelle, you said there's not a word for ROV in your language. What about uh, boitroidal? Boitroidal? <laughs> um. Okay, zoom in, please. Be grapes or something. Grape like. Grape like, yeah. 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 Let me let me let me think on that one. This is I'm fascinated by that language now. Uh singing ink at uh aka. Um Grape Lake? Yeah. Rock that's like lots of little berries. Oh. Yeah. That's a way to say it. All right, I don't you. know if thank we have you. like a word for grape, but Right. Yeah. <laughs> The closest thing is like salal berries. I so I said that. Makes sense. They're, they're all like a little they're cluster grape -like. of yeah. Totally yeah. I, I call them butter at all. Sure. Someone in the chat want, is considering making a remote control model of Hercules. They wanted to know if there's any good places to get reference materials, like a like a model. If you go onto nautiluslive.org under education and educational resources, there is a lot of different things. I'm not entirely sure if there's any models of Herc, but you could definitely um, browse through that. Fish. There's Fish. categories that you can click through to make it a bit easier because we have hundreds of resources. Um, but we do have plenty on there, so maybe you'll find something that'll help you. I know that there's a um, like Lego building activity for Hercules. Is there really? Yeah, there it's is? a very simple Lego thing. Okay. It's not like anything too fancy, but yeah, you can build Herc as a Lego. I will say if you're going to build a operating mini ROV, you, can, on the you can zoom in on that Halothorian. I'll say what I want to say later. Go ahead, Dave. With the little tiny HPU. And a little, little <laughs> tiny comps and little tiny manifolds. Um, I just saw on Instagram that. All right, thank you. The, one of the. Let me look up what it's called. Hold on. While you're looking that up, I'll finish my thought. Yep. The, uh, I would recommend either building a mini ROV that is operable or a mini ROV that looks like Hercules and is not operable because a lot of the designs of Hercules don't scale very well while maintaining operations. So obviously you're not going to be using a <laughs> mini HPU <laughs> or whatever, but even to do small model thrusters and tiny little buoyancy and stuff, it's really, really hard to do that at a small scale, even in a replica version, that in a way that it'll operate. You can Wait. do a lot of stuff with like pipes and PVC and, yeah, Roger, and that kind of stuff uh, for buoyancy using air, but it will not look anything like Herc. So it kind of, I think those are two separate goals. Mm -hmm. With a little scrap of syntactic foam yeah. on top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, zoom in, please. Wow. Oh, yeah, what's going on here? It's a Fish. hemicorallion. With a squatty. Uh, yeah. So Anthony's on half Unplanted. of it. Yeah. I like and the pink uh, Zoanthids. And uh, a Wait, are the pink ones zoanthids, or is that the actual animal? The, the pink one is hemicorallium. Oh. Wow. What a nice and color the, combination. Yeah, it's pretty. And yeah. The, the other looks like zoanthids. All right, thank you. Have we seen this before? Paolo, do you know? Paolo, have we seen this before? Have we seen that before? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, we have seen them in previous dives. Uh, colonies of, uh, I, I guess, mostly 
bamboos covered by granted. Okay, it's like a tube. It's all hollow. You can kind of see better in the cinema cam. Um, so, what I found at the um, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary's uh, Exploration Center, they have an exhibit right now where you can control a mini ROV in this like tank of water, and they have like a whole seascape that's like made of you know fake material, and they have like animals like there's a chonicops and a holothorian. Um, and various corals and sponges that you could like use this little ROV to like go around and find and identify. Cool. Um, and I think that is one of the coolest exhibits that they could make. Um, and I wish I could go see it someday. I'm going to go down for a minute, and then I'm going to come right back up. Roger. Do you want me to delta, or just leave you? Uh, leave you hanging. I'm hoping you just go to the end of my leash, and then come right uh, back up. Okie doke. Oh, this is great, Trevor. Thanks for coming down here. You seem like a neat little... Bench. Ledge. Little ledge thing, yeah. We got the curly Q coral. At the end there. Yeah, you're coming back up now. That whole wall is about to fall off too. Yeah. Shrimp. 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 So solid. Mini ROV maker says, I was thinking a 10 to 1 scale. Yeah, buoyancy will be very difficult, but I'm not one to back down from a challenge. Well, if you can make it happen, power to you. Yeah, and send a picture to OET. With little tiny push cores <laughs> and little tiny <laughs> miskins. <laughs> Please, not. Question in the chat. I know some coral can be bioluminescent, but what is the reason for this? Can we do same, 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 please? Thank you. The reason, the function or the, the biological, um. chemical. So they had the bioluminescent is because some proteins are excited uh, by uh, oxygen and they in, in these reactions they they produce light but I'm not sure about the f meaning or the function of this maybe it could be uh, to attract potential the small uh, phytoplankton film and Louise yeah, love that. That was very dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have vertigo? <laughs> so the current is coming from the bottom, right? Uh, let's find out again. It changes. Let's see it what changed. happens. I'm just going to sit here. It's not much. It's kind of coming along the wall. Okay. Kind of towards us. And maybe slightly upslope. It was a little more upslope earlier, I think. But yeah, hard to say. You can see the marine snow floating by pretty well in this yeah. side of the So you see the vehicles being pushed kind of back and in towards the wall. So it's probably going coming from below and going uh, east to west a little bit. Yeah, it's not not a strong current. Shrimp. Shrimp. I feel like the other watches didn't continue the shrimp count, but I will because 
one. We've seen one shrimp. Yeah, that, I think that was from like the first watch. But um, I need to know how many shrimp I see, so I will continue it forever. <laughs> When you get back to shore, don't go to Red Lobster for dinner then. <laughs> They'll kick you out. I'm only going to count shrimp that I see swimming by or hanging out can on a coral. Can we check ah. if it's possible? Yes, we can, yeah. yep. Uncooked shrimp only. Live shrimp. <laughs> Uncooked only. shrimp. Don't look near any hydrothermal vents. <laughs> yeah. Okay, zoom in, please. So they, these animals now look different. They are trying to uh, be hanging on the on a side of the coral instead of being inside, getting shelter. Oh, look this this worm. Ooh, Ooh. worm, worm. I don't like that worm. It looks like a it's caterpillar. So, it's so big. It's cool. <laughs> Do you want it? No. But uh, it would be oh, nice to uh, see it. To uh, see it. All right, bye. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want worms either. You? There it goes. Uh, it looked like a house centipede. Oh, yeah, they kind of Those polychaetes are really nice. How does those uh, big ones you found in the tunicate turn out? The, it was very similar to that. It's a polynoid worm, a scale worm. And um, yeah, there are plenty of uh, polynoids that are uh, a commensal in other organisms, like the black coral we, we found and in the tunicate. Also, you can find them sometimes living on holothurians and echinoderms, like sea urchins. Do you think these are small enough to sample? Yes. And fit into the box? Mm. <laughs> Maybe. Can we get the arm ready? Just in case. Roger? I think uh, I think we can find a small one. The one on the yeah, that one right, on the right there. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. We don't have to be super fast, but we do have to be efficient. Can I put bubble on craft, or yep, is porch for better? Uh, ready to turn the arm on? Uh, yes. Which one of these little? Yeah, it's, it's little, that one right there. The wee one. The wee one. Yeah, yeah it's loose. loose. Great. Whoops. Nice get. Lock it in. Okay, it's locked. Nice. Thank you for telling me where that was. <laughs> <laughs> I was really flying blind. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Whee! If it'll fit. Oh yeah, that'll fit. Okay. Maybe. She'll go. Can I get a zoom out? And Dave, can you zoom wide on Atalanta, please? I'm going to be on the go for this, so. Roger. No recovery if you drop it. <laughs> yeah. Let's go for beta. Roger. This is number 188 now. Thank you. Ready you're for welcome. sample salvo, if, if you're OK with that. Beta? beta? Bravo. Bravo. I keep calling it beta. beta. I think because I this call one? it a alpha. Yes, please. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Nice. We have another great ROV question in the Stand chat. Stand by. Yep. 
Bringing the old arm back around. Oh my gosh, we are close to the wall. Yeah, eee. we are. No, please don't bonk. You just push no me bonk. off a bit. No bonk, we're good. <laughs> nice. All right, dive to our ROV cam salvo. Da, 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 where are we? That was, that was good. Didn't fall too far behind. Not too much catch up. Not too much catch up. Catch up. <laughs> or catch up. Catch up. Not too much catch up. Craft is secured. Bubble back on porch. All right, all good. Box is closed. Cool. So uh, yeah, our V question. Yeah, it kind of really relates really well to what we were just doing. Um, I have to find it again because it more chats came in. Can we zoom on the what a Ritigorgia maybe? Yep. Um, so chat says I'd love to learn more about same, how same, the pilots same, maintain situational awareness, Thank sonar, you. cameras, etc. Thanks. ADHD. <laughs> me a lot. Actually, you grow like what a third eye and another hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oof. Ah, uh, bouncy, uh, bouncy. Sorry. Where is Cinema where is cam, though, is neat. Did you say you wanted to zoom on this one? This little one? Did I see a yellow thing? Yellow thing? Mm -mm. No. Yep. Yep. Uh, the sonar helps us maintain situational awareness. Um, so does our ROV nav. Yeah, we have 148,212 screens in front of us. We gotta keep an eye on all of them. Mm -hmm. How many cameras do you have around the ROV to help you see? Oh, that's a great Annabelle question. Okay, so there's five SD cams on Herc, plus the bubble cam, plus the cinema cam, which I'm still counting, plus Zeus, so that's eight. Um, eight on Hercules, and then two tool cams on Atalanta, and then mini Zeus. So 12 cameras, give or take, I would say. And you guys use all of them, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, yeah, we do. We have another camera on Hercules that's mounted but not plugged in that I would love to have as a top-down view, similar to Bubble, but it's super wide angle. It's extremely Ooh. useful, but we don't have enough channels for it. We don't have enough nice. ways to pipe it up. Some of the cameras we can't like use at the same time, so like we have to choose between there's like a, a port cam and a starboard cam, or the the bio box cam or the bucket cam. And that's okay because. We're not usually doing all those things at once. Mm -hmm. And we also have a team to help with situational awareness. So a lot of the, a lot of the things. That's what NAV is for. That's a, yeah, a huge role in NAV is to understand where the vehicles are, where we're trying to go, and managing that with all the science objectives. But also, like, a lot of the time, the piloting is Another. just. Where are we looking? No, I just uh, call in this. Uh, She's winning depths is good, Johnny. You, oh don't, yeah. you don't need to zoom in. All right. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of the time it's just kind of one person needs to do everything. The other person is just, just situational awareness. And then, of course, we do samples where it's two people. And then it goes back to, um, I don't know, I could put the vehicle in autos and then move Atalanta around, for instance. But and small fish. Having fish. two people allows us to Venn diagram over whatever we see and watch each other's backs. Look at that rock and cinema cam. That's amazing. Yeah, nice lava flows. Yeah, the line between them is probably successive lava flows. So we have, he we have here uh, tragically we sponges. Well, that's a nice 3D view of it. Yeah. Covered by hydrates. I 
another question in the chat is, if you stir up the sediment, does it set the nutrients free and attract animals? So I guess like if we create a little blizzard stirring up the sediment, does that help things feed on it? Because it's organic material? Yeah, I'm not sure I, I would say it nutrients, but it'd be the uh, biological material that's kind of buried. It reminds me of uh, when we go co-hogging or clamming back in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. when you're raking the sediments, after you rake it, you have all the uh, the crabs and the shrimp come in to... To feast. Yep. It's a little more biologically rich area than down here, but I assume it's probably similar. And if you happen to drop a piece of wood too, who knows? Yeah, that was cool. Um. That looks like sheet flows on top of pillow flows below. Another question is, when was the last time you discovered something completely new and unknown? It was the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I think in most of the dives we find something different, special, a new record, a new species. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt here. We're looking at uh, probably calling another ship move in soonish, but we're coming around the curve of this wall. Do we want to keep following the curve? Or yeah, do you just, go up or down? just keep following the curve. Uh, yeah, follow the curve. Sounds good. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Okay, great. Question for Rob. What is the most interesting thing you found when cutting up our rocks this expedition? Mm. Yeah, we we'll just do one more move before before we start going. I think we should do, like, start angling around now. I know it's, it's, it's like, all been interesting. Some of the rocks have been. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Look incredibly fresh see the for as old as we think they too. are with very thin. Uh, okay. Manganese crust on it. I think that's what is most yes. surprising to me. I thought these would all look much older or weather than they are. Relicanthus. All right, can we zoom on the helicactus? <laughs> what was that? I think it's like relicanthus. Oh. Relicanthus. With an R. Also known as the giant sea anemone. Yeah, it is quite giant. This is a good one, a good shot of it. And you can see what the uh, current's doing pretty well now, too. Yeah. Yeah. 10 centimeters in diameter, approximately. Yeah. They're big. Their tentacles can get up to two meters, I think. Wow. The chatter wow. side ones. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. What did you say they were called, Morocco? The giant. Giant sea anemone. They're. Gina's name is Relicanthus. With a TH thus. TH, yep. yeah. yeah. Gina. But they are in sea anemones. Mm -hmm. How is the five zero meters zero six five degrees? Same speed? Roger. Gauge Thank check. You. Roger. What's this orange spot about? Let's zoom. All right, I, I come up. I'm gonna lose uh, light on it. So I gotta come spongy back debris. Down. Or just like un or lightly crusted rock, maybe. Can we zoom on the orange thing, please? Exposed rock. Wow, wow. it's weathered rock. Why wow. there? Well, I think it looks like it broke off right there. Okay. Mm. So it looks more than likely it's probably some sort of a hyaloclastite, a flow breccia. And that's what it kind of looks like when we open them up, they have that orangey right, look. Thank you. Funny that it would break off from right in. I guess that's what it looks like when the cracks fail and the yeah. flow tumbles. And that is the rock that you're looking for down below, right? You're looking exactly. For like that. But you see how thick this flow is. It's probably, a, you know, two meters plus. 
Wow. So remember a while back you said it looks like the cliff was going to fall soon? Would it look like that when you see like the brown of the, the normal rock? Yeah, if you went down to the on the back side of it, mm -hmm. you probably... And then it would take years for that to crust over yep. the manganese. Yeah, would it have to completely encrust in manganese to hide that orange? Is that what would hide the yeah, orange? Yeah, I think so. It, it may almost happen at the same time where it may have been, you know, dark, real basalty, and then you get the encrustation and you get the uh, the weathering too. Hmm. All right, we're getting into a little nook here, and the cliff is going to curl back out a little bit. Back to the new species question. How long does it take to confirm that something you find is actually new? Good question. It depends on um, the type of finding. Sometimes you know immediately that is something new because you, if you have an expertise on a specific taxonomic group, you can tell that there is nothing similar on the uh, known diversity of that group. Sometimes uh, it's tricky because you need to perform molecular analysis and also morphological analysis, dissections, comparis comparison with type species of uh, related species to take into account mor uh, morphological and specific variation. And yeah, it depends. There's a nose. Or it depends on whether Steve is awake or not. <laughs> <laughs> Chat fact, did you know relicanthus anemones tentacles can grow up to two meters? I just learned that from Maranke. Did she say that just now? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, Maranke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's zoom in the squatty. Go ahead. Lobster. There's two. Lobster. Double squatty. There's Are they different squash kinds? Squash and squat. Uh, well, I cannot tell. These animals are really tricky, so you need to see the spines and the oh. the way the shape of the dactyli, which are the distal part of the walking legs, and how they are curved and how many spines they they have there. So it's very Thank difficult you. to Roger. say. Roger. <laughs> Thank you. Annabelle, right. somehow chat knew about lobster. How'd they know about lobster? I don't know. Lobster. I'm lobster. coming up. And you should come up too. Roger, coming up on Delta. The calls are coming from inside I the was ship. Say, maybe it's <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> we got a lobster in the chat. Maybe it's the same person who's making the lobsters. The secret lobster. Why are some of these um, parts of the cliffs more pillow and round and some more square? Gauge check finished. Roger. Why are they more round and square? Yeah, like why are the pillows, some pillows more like spherical and other? Well, the pillows, that's probably the original shape when they're erupted. But depending on uh, the internal structure of the flow or what's happening inside, there's something called jointing. And that's typically going to be more angular. Oh, my mom texted me. Um, <laughs> she says, "See, am Annabelle Eitz Chai." It, she says, "Good job." No, <laughs> thank you, mom. There you go. Chat, chat says they know everything. They're always watching. I mean, they are always watching. They are, That's yeah. That's what they're doing. Do you think that the 
the lobster drawer on the board of lies could be Banksy on board. Oh, so, so is it a mystery of who's drawing those? Is that the story there? It yeah. could be Banksy. And they Banksy. just keep reproducing. Hmm. Well, we can rule out who it isn't. And that's me and anyone else with no artistic ability. That'd be me. All right, we're out. We're not suspects. <laughs> but if, what if it, if it was you guys, it'd be the perfect crime. Hmm. Ooh. Been hiding in our, my artistic ability my entire life since the age of four for this one moment. <laughs> the lobster. lobster. <laughs> I I still remember when I was a young kid. My brother was a pretty good artist, and for class he drew the uh, the Mercury wings feet sort of thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No. It's, foot, it's, yeah. it's like a, the flying foot for like Mercury or oh, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I insisted on drawing shoelaces on it. <laughs> Nice. You just scribbled on it? Well, I drew shoelaces. Well, you <laughs> you <laughs> shoelaces. Scribble? He made me feel guilty for years saying he, oh. he, he's got a failing grade for it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Lumpy. Lumpy. Sponge? Chat says a previous watch told them about the lobsters. Someone in the chat ah. said, is lobster generic lobster? And that was someone's dad. <laughs> yeah, this this chunk is going to go soon, too. Yeah. Annabelle, wave and say hi to mom. Or dad. Or Hello. dad, or Can we however other. Here, please? However many Ooh, other of my relatives are background. watching. <laughs> Not circle around it. Instead, do this. No. We have a, a lobster question, an actual squat lobster question. Um, do they match the color? Can you please wait, step wait a minute. What, what is this? What is this? They are in zero four five the degrees. Colony. I don't yeah. know. Is it a snail or? Oh like, yeah, thank it's you. Like a masses, like white masses. Hmm? Uh, uh, this uh, Steve says that are. Octopus uh, leg, uh, eggs. Oh, wow. All right, come wide, please. Nice. Maybe we should wait here for them to hatch. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, by the way. Um, so they're asking if squat lobster's color tends to match their associates. Yeah. They used to get the same coloration pattern than the host, especially some shallower species that lives on a few hundred meters. But they don't change color. They just have no, to they be. No, they just, they just have the same color. What's going on? What you got another ship move coming in? Bridge, no? Steve said those were octopus eggs. Okay. Me too. I didn't know octopus eggs were that small. <laughs> really? Sorry, no. I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. So there's an octopus around here somewhere. Maybe octopus. I know you're around here. What's he doing? <laughs> Can we zoom this beautiful? Did you hear? Oh, you didn't hear that. <laughs> primnoid. Um, yes, we can zoom on the primnoid. Go ahead. Look at those little white things underneath the rock to the right. This could be Calyptrophora, perhaps. Oops, oops, oops. Ugh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the front row 
was telling jokes without us. Did you see the silly back row, how silly they are? <gasps> Wait, I'm on SPL. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the nicest insult <laughs> you could make. What are they doing, science back there? They're sciencing? Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> watch. Look at this pearl app. Yeah, chat, so far in this expedition four? we've seen four Dumbos. Um, but that was, you know, miles away from here. This neat little bookshelf, little slot, drop yeah. box. Okay. Drop your homework in there. <laughs> Sorry, teacher, I dropped my homework in the deep sea drop box instead of the classroom drop box. You can go get it there. It's submitted on time, it's just the wrong location. My mom says, I'm listening to you while driving to Rochester. Just know I'm sacrificing conspiracy podcasts for you guys. <laughs> We're coming up Is with coral conspiracies. Um, Sporal. Stelodorix, maybe? Ooh. Uh, zoom in, please. Ah, gonna be bouncy. It's yeah. a sporrel? Yes, He's back. Yeah. I've, seen a, I've seen a few sporrels along this ridge. It's interesting how abundant they were down at 2300 meters yep. in, the, in the previous watch. Thank you. Thanks. Look Is it because curve. we're closer to the atoll? I love it. Yeah. We're not that much closer. No? No. Yeah, Chris Kelly confirms that the identification is Stellodorix, which is a Desmos sponge. And for for the chat, Desmos sponge are sponge with uh, protein plus Ooh, uh, silicon speckles. Thank you for thinking of the chat, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. All right, what do we got here? A little overhang. A nose. Squatting. Look at this. Is it a rock or a sponge? This thing that's sticking out here. It's, it's a rock. rock. <laughs> <laughs> Nice one. It looks what sandy. Why not a runge? Like sedimented. A runge. Yeah. Runge. Yeah, I'm into it. It's, oh, but that's a sponge. Whoa. Under that the runge. That is a sponge. Yeah. Big polyogon, maybe? Well, that's a rock, but behind it's a sponge. Do you know how far down this cliff goes? A long way. Is there a way to tell with like the sonar or anything or no? Oh. Rats, I really wanted to bonk this rock to see if I could break it off, but I <laughs> I'm into the light bar instead. <laughs> Don't know. Oh, no. no. <laughs> and other things. Just the dead ones. Well, I'm glad that Steph's mom is uh, is hanging in there with us, uh, even though she'd rather be listening to conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. We have the lobster conspiracy theory. Yeah, that's true. The lobster. Still, yeah. riveting. Still going on, so hopefully that. Yeah, it's like. Is this a massive chrysogorgid?
Ooh, what's underneath? Wow. Whoa. Oh, that's a great shot. Cool. Really, really cool. Wow. Can't even see the sponge from wow. Atlanta. It's underneath the overhang. Oh. We can zoom in on this coral, please. Get an ID on it. All right, thank you. And we have collected Bleach. this last yep. year. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Steve. Wait, I just thought. Same, 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 please. Rob, how long does it take for the manganese to encrust over something? Well, I mean, the growth rate's about uh, maybe two to five millimeters per million year. So very, very small. Yeah, very slow. Okay, never mind. Don't listen to me. I was thinking, since some of the sponges and stuff can be, like, very old, like, maybe, like, a hundred or so years old, why don't they have manganese crusts on the living ones? But I guess they're not old enough. Well, I mean, it just may be they don't uh, collect on the uh, the living sponge. But they collect on the spongy debris sometimes. Well, the alive sponges have like little c micro currents in them, right? Like where they're mm. where yeah, they're the sucking in water. Yep, yeah. that's true. I guess they're moving at like a micro scale. Um, Chat wants to know what type of Aritagorgia that was. It's a Rodendoidirogorgia SP. Can you spell that? Uh, yeah. R H O D A N I R I D O G O R G I A. I was really hoping you were just going to stop it. Yeah. Can you spell that? <laughs> yeah. I can. <laughs> Probably a new species. Um, um, uh, Let's walk in in Hawaii is working in this mm -hmm. species. Yeah, this is right in the corner here, Trevor. This is cool. Yeah, it's really neat. You can actually see on the ROV track where the wall goes, how it's not yeah. totally linear. Because I'm pretty staying pretty close to it. That is really cool. So just so we're all on the same page, it's going to take about 90 minutes to come up. So we're trying to be on the surface for 10 minutes to the top of the hour. We're going to be off bottom at 10.20. Sounds good. Is that a Brzezingid there? I guess. So we have I think so, yeah. Sure is. Brzezingid in Nice. We have an Aridogorgia. It's been a long time since we've seen one of those. Yeah, I'm curious because we haven't seen any squat lobsters in living in Iditogorgia. There wasn't there one like a little while back. In the yeah, in the last dive, they saw a few of them, and I'm curious if we see another one to see if the uh, it Let's is. Let's get the next species. move not quite parallel. Let's get a little more in towards the wall. Shrimp, please. Shrimp. Something like something like this. Yeah, like uh, 45 maybe, or yeah, maybe I've 60? Yeah, I've been doing 45. Oh, okay, then maybe 60. Yeah, uh, one more. 60 or 70 or something, yeah, thank you. Shrimp? Remember that six inch shrimp we saw last night? You still thinking about that? <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Imagine biting into that shrimp. It'd be huge. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost a 
<laughs> lobster size. <laughs> so the, that shrimp is uh, long, long leg shrimp, Nematocarcinus. Chris says, thank you, Chris. We are, all the shrimps we are counting are probably different things. We are seeing Acanthophyra, mm -hmm. Nematocarcinus. We saw a couple of Stylodactylidae uh, shrimps. They look different. I can they tell they're look different. different. Yeah. Some of them are pandalids. Cool Atalanta view. Look at a little snowman coming up. <laughs> <coughs> it's cold down here. Shrimp. What is the temperature down here? Two degrees. It's always yeah. my guess. <laughs> two point one, two point two. So when we recover the samples from the ROV, the water sometimes is freezing. Yeah, it makes your hands hurt. Yeah. You should get some even bigger forceps to pull the yeah. rocks out. <laughs> You should make the geologists do it. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, it is weird. All right, I think I'm going to move ahead a little bit here. Got to do a little bit of got to go here. Fracture? I'm going to come down oh, the just wall a quite a bit. Between Roger, flows. I'm going to come down with you a little bit. Yeah, and as the ship does its next move, we'll come back up. Look at the texture change. It's like very rough, and then it gets smooth, and then it gets rough again. I like the lava tube there. A lava tube? Maybe we're just a little far from the wall, is all. Yeah. And it, because it's uh, it's not going to be perfectly vertical. We can actually see something if I come down just a bit. We do now. Now we see in the wall in Atlanta. Atlanta is below the plateau. Can we please step Always five fun. meters during zero six five degrees same speed? Deep. Roger, thank you. Yeah, I would almost expect to see some columnar basalt somewhere in here. That would be pretty cool. So if we saw this and didn't know we were already at the top on sonar, it would be cause for alarm. Mm -hmm. But because we know we're only eh, 20 meters down from the top, it's not a cause for alarm, but you see that wall there and the pink yeah. hardness in the middle. It's, uh, if you didn't know your summit depth, then it'd be, it'd be pretty scary. Did you see something? Yeah, you just like, something is definitely coming ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we think there'd be a cliff like this from the mapping we did? Yeah, you can see the tight contours yeah, on let the, me uh, the high pack map. Let me zoom out if you need. This is what we're actually trying to take advantage of to see this. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the after the cliff stops, it's still pretty, pretty much of a steep slope. 
Yeah, this is probably the head of a scarp or a failed surface. Oh, Slump scar. Extended. Failed. Yeah, I didn't know if this cliff was going to expose carbonates or basalts. And from what I can tell, just morphologically, it looks more like basalts, but get conf confirmation. Well, there's even more of an overhang underneath us. Yeah. It's a really steep cliff. I yeah. thought coming down 20 meters would get us closer, and it probably got us three meters closer. Maybe. Chat wants to know why um, it would be scary if you didn't know where the top of the peak was. I think we have here again um, Pleurocordia or Ramoligordia. Let's look inside. Nothing inside on Cinema Cam. Nothing inside on Zeus Cam. <laughs> It's a very different type of diversity here. Yeah, really cool animal though. Um, I heard the question, I will come back to it in a minute. Thanks. That is a professional sponge. I'd say, mm -hmm. yeah. When you're moving the ship, moving Atlanta, Atlanta drags behind the ship a little bit and if you come up to a wall and you stop the ship because you're scared you'll hit it well Atlanta's still going to keep swinging and you don't want to hit the wall with Atlanta so you have to come up as fast as you can to try to clear it if the wall is 20, 30, 50 meters no problem you, know, you come up and you go over top of it and all is well but if the cliff is 2, 300, 400 meters then you dartboard Mm. Not a great scene. That might make some rocks fall. Yeah, it might make some rocks fall. I'm going to come down no, the just wall a quite a bit. Between Roger, I'm going to come down with you a little bit. Yeah, and as the ship does its next move, we'll come back up. Look at the texture change. It's like very rough, and then it gets smooth, and then it gets rough again. I like the lava tube there. A lava tube? Maybe. We're just a little far from the wall is all. Yeah. And it, because it's uh it's not gonna be perfectly vertical, we can actually see something if I come down just a bit. We do not. Now we're seeing the wall in Atlanta. Atlanta's below the plateau. Can we please step Always five fun. meters during zero six five degrees same speed? Deep. Roger, thank you. Yeah, I would almost expect to see some columnar basalt somewhere in here. That would be pretty cool. So if we saw this and didn't know we were already at the top on sonar, it would be cause for alarm. Mm -hmm. But because we know we're only eh, 20 meters 
down from the top, it's not a cause for alarm. But you see that wall there and the pink yeah. hardness in the middle. It's, uh, if you didn't know your summit depth, then it'd be, it'd be pretty scary. Did you see something? Yeah, you just like something is definitely coming ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did we think there'd be a cliff like this from the mapping we did? Yeah, you can see the tight contours yeah, on let the, me, uh, the high pack map. Let me zoom out a bit. This is what we're actually trying to take advantage of to see this. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the after the cliff stops, it's still pretty, pretty much of a steep slope. Yeah, this is probably the head of a scarp or a failed surface oh, slump yeah, scar. Extended, failed. Yeah, I didn't know if this cliff was going to expose carbonates or basalts. From what I can tell, just morphologically, it looks more like basalts, but get conf confirmation. Well, there's even more of an overhang underneath us. Yeah. It's a really steep cliff. Yeah. I thought coming down 20 meters would get us closer, and it probably got us three meters closer. Maybe. Chat wants to know why um, it would be scary if you didn't know where the top of the peak was. I think we have here again um, or Let's look inside. Nothing inside on Cinema Cam. Nothing inside on Zeus Cam. <laughs> it's a very different type of diversity here. Yeah. Really cool animal, though. Um, I heard the question. I will come back to it in a minute. Thanks. That is a professional sponge. I'd say, mm -hmm. yeah. When you're moving the ship, moving Atlanta, Atlanta drags behind the ship a little bit. And if you come up to a wall and you stop the ship because you're scared you'll hit it, well, Atlanta's still going to keep swinging. And you don't want to hit the wall with Atlanta, so you have to come up as fast as you can to try to clear it. If the wall is 20, 30, 50 meters, no problem. You, know, you come up and you go over top of it, and all is well. But if the cliff is two, 300, 400 meters, then you dartboard. Mm. Not a great scene. That might make some rocks fall. Yeah, it might make some rocks fall. All right, actually, you know what? Can you do me a favor, please? Mm -hmm. Can you bring your heading around to starboard and we can take the wrap out? That would be a good time for that. You can keep a big old delta, 25 meters or so. 25? Can, yeah, I'm coming down, so. Roger. You can just go to starboard all the way. Uh, do you want to keep the go. delta that big? Yeah. Okay. Keep it really tight. That way there's no loops as you spin. I wish we could pluck a rock off of this cliff. <laughs> They're all welded though, aren't they? Yeah.
think if they weren't welded, they'd be tumbling down. That's why I, I try to find these little shelves where they might collect. Look at the Atalantisonar. It's funny. Yeah. It's just spinning around. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's like a failed panorama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever seen those? I used to make those where you'd like get yourself in the photo three times. I've seen ones where like the dog is running in front and there's like a long dog. <laughs> All right, that's looking much better. All right, I could start coming back up a little bit. Okay, Roger. Get back to normal operating conditions. Spinning around. There you are. There I are. There you are. You are. <laughs> do you want to do a little tether check, or are we all good? You can do a tether check, sure. You can do a tether check. Okay, no. Turn on some lights and take a look at the tether. Look at that wall in the view. Love it. Hmm. How is the current here? Ah, oh, it's it it's a little more than it was the rest of the shift, but it's still not very much. Okay. Looks pretty good to me. Cool. Thanks. Do you want me to look like all the way behind, or? No, that's fine. Okay. We can pretty much assume it's a straight shot to that first weight. Do you think you could see the cliff face in Atlanta view? There you go. Fishy. Yeah, scary. Oh wow. Oh. That's Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt her up a little bit and maybe turn on a light. Yeah. It's a big cliff. Yeah. And look in her view, you can see it overhangs even more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we're look, moving the ship. Look at that. Moving That's a little closer to it cliff. now. Another reason why a wall is scary in sonar is sonar sees what's right in front of the vehicle. Um and slightly up, slightly down but it doesn't see 30, 50, 100 meters up where there could very well be a large overhang. I've definitely seen corals and sponges rain down on Atalanta's <laughs> camera I was gonna from the say, stuff that the cable has hit above us. I before. was going to ask, how do you know there's not a cliff above Atalanta? You don't. All right, actually, you know what? Can you do me a favor, please? Mm -hmm. Can you bring your heading around to starboard and we can take the wrap out? That would be a good time for that. You can keep a big old delta, 25 meters or so. 25? Can, yeah, I'm coming down, so. Roger. You can just go to starboard all the way. Uh, do you want to keep the no. delta that big? Yeah. Okay. Keep it really tight. That way there's no loops as you spin. I wish we could pluck a rock off of this cliff. <laughs> They're all welded though, aren't they? Yeah. I think if they weren't welded, they'd be tumbling down. That's why I, I try to find these little shelves where this thing might collect. Look at the Atalanta sonar, it's funny. Yeah. It's just spinning around. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's like a failed panorama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever seen those? I used to make those where you'd like get yourself in the photo three times. I've seen ones where like the dog is running in front and there's like a long dog. <laughs> All right, that's looking much better. All right, I could start coming back up a little bit. Okay, Roger. Get back to normal operating conditions. Spinning around. There you are. There I are. There you are. You are. <laughs> do you want to do a little tether check, or are we all good? 
You can do a tether check, sure. You can do a tether check. Porky, no. Turn on some lights and take a look at the tether. Look at that wall in the view. Love it. Hmm. How is the car in here? Ah, uh, it's, it looks it's a little good to more me. than it was the rest of the shift, but it's still not very much. Yeah. Looks pretty good to me. Cool. Thanks. Do you want me to look like all the way behind or? No, that's fine. Okay. We can pretty much assume it's a straight shot to that first bait. Do you think you could see the cliff face in that Atlanta view? There you go. Fishy. Yeah, scary. Oh wow. Oh. That's Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt her up a little bit and maybe turn on a light. Yeah. It's a big cliff. Yeah. And you look in her view, you can see it overhangs even more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we're look, moving the ship. Look at that. Moving That's a little closer all to it cliff. now. Another reason why a wall is scary in sonar is sonar sees what's right in front of the vehicle. Um and slightly up, slightly down but it doesn't see 30, 50, 100 meters up where there could very well be a large overhang. I've definitely seen corals and sponges rain down on Atlanta's <laughs> camera I was gonna from the say, stuff that the cable has hit above us. I before. was going to ask, how do you know there's not a cliff above Atalanta? You don't. We're inside the danger circle now, which means I can come up safely. I mean, I can come up and be still be within safe. view of this <laughs> cliff. So. Coming up. All right. Uh, do you want me to delta up or just? Yeah, you can keep around 15. Um, I have a question Roger. for Elias. If you're. Yeah, sure. Um, they want to know. Bonk. Uh, what is the contour interval in that um, the map? Yeah. So we have um, 10 meters vertical. Do you f like in vertical, like it's not mm -hmm. horizontal. We have 10 and 100 Ooh, meters. All right. Yeah. So that's why you can see they are kind of they are close together. Speaking um, of overhang, here you and go. And they're also asking about the color scale. I guess the yeah, the Atlanta so mini zoos down. <laughs> lobster in the in the. Yeah, let huh. me just do this. Sorry, mini zoos tilting down. Yes, while coming tilting up on it Delta. down. Roger. And coming up on Delta. Just do everything all at once. Yeah. All. Need all another three hands. Few arms. Yeah. There we go. More. All right. Cool. So it was a little overhang as we get up in the water column. Atlanta is getting closer to the wall. Now. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful colony here. Mm -hmm. Can we please and step now we're starting to see the top of the hill in Atlanta oh, sonar. It yeah. It'll be really cool to stitch these scenes Roger, together. Thank you. So it would be extremely irresponsible to do this, as you can see why, from if we didn't already know exactly the height of the top of this. Roger. And it's a guillot. We know it's going to be within 20 meters of where we already were. There it is. There it is. Atlanta's so yeah, clear. so I'm zooming out now. If you can, if you can see the IPAC screen. So like, I mean, the There's color scale or the color <laughs> bar. Like, yeah. We kind of. It depends, like there are different kinds of color bars, but mm -hmm. the one we are seeing now, the red, like, uh, yeah, I would say red, it's really the shallow part, and the ones, the parts that are green, that's really the, like, the deeper part. So sometimes we kind of use just blue that, you know, when you see deep blue, that is, uh, like, it's deeper water, and when the blue is light, it's, it's shallow. But this color scale that we are currently using, this is, um, it's more like a, not exactly rainbow, but like red signifies that it's it's shallow. And um, when you see, if you look at the right, the contours are more spaced there. It means that it is kind of flat. It's kind of um, uniform. Like the depth is kind of the same there. But when you look at when you look to the left, it's really they are close together, meaning it's it's kind of steep. Like you know, you have uh, more slope there. And um, yeah, so. Um, what else am I missing? I think that was it. You went over the contours and the color, and that's what they asked. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Of course.
yeah color bar is usually a, like you know <laughs> some people like you know you want to use the um like the normal blue why some people they don't even like this rainbow at all like you know they just like it makes sense to me the rainbow yeah yeah that's what um, like you know the normal people say but like for the mappers <laughs> like we don't like it <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why do you use it in high pack? Why does uh, yeah? OG because use it? it's it's like I mean it's it's good for visualization. Hmm. Wait, why don't you like it? Why don't mappers? Uh, yeah, like it's um, to us it's not representative enough. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, it's I not, don't know. Uh, not accurate enough. No, it's, I mean, it's doing the job, yeah, like, yeah, I would say that it's not um, accurate enough, yeah, but I mean, it's doing the job in terms of visualization, because if you see red, like, you know, it's not that, okay, it's danger, so, yeah, you know, so it's shallow, so, and you don't want to run aground. ground. Not at 1,900 meters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for this type, yeah, but when you are doing, like, when you are in shallow water, so you want to be careful, but here we are safe. Are these gettable rocks here? Mm. Do you have time? Only if you really love them, but not <laughs> not easily. No, don't worry about it then. Okay. So I mean, what I wanted to try to do the last half hour or so is maybe get another rock somewhere along here. Look at this overhang. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, at some point, just kind of head up over the top of this thing into the uh, the flatlands, just to see what's there. Cool. Well, I'll get a little ahead of yep. Atalanta. How and could you uh, love one of these rocks? You haven't even dated it yet. Pardon? That's very funny. I said, how could you love <laughs> one of these rocks? You haven't even dated it yet. Well, there are these <laughs> online things. <laughs> Streaming live. Mail Mail order. Live org. <laughs> Mail order rock? 900 numbers. Rock Tinder. Sometimes you just know. <laughs> no, All right, side. we are at a spot where we can grab the next rock you'd like. Is this a... Uh... I'm waiting for an Annabelle. Ooh! Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I heard a little O. Oh. <laughs> That wasn't the one you expected, though. No. Yeah, is there anything on the ledges down here? Allegedly. Uh, allegedly on the ones. Maybe. Not. It looks no. like maybe on the ledges coming up that are not quite in Zeus yet, there might be some. Here's hoping. Because you're not looking for one on the very top, is that correct? No. Preferably not. Okay. No, I don't see anything there. Could be the. Elias, I think I was wrong about another this. One. I think you can go back out. Oh, okay. I was wrong. So, whatever the next move is, you can go that way, then follow okay. the track. Thanks. Of course. Uh, we could dangerously sample this one down here. Do you think there's something there? Possibly. I'm going to come down about seven meters. Oh, okay, I see that. Yeah, let's get one of those down there. That, that's even you better. You want me to come down on Delta? Yeah, you can come down. Gotcha. You're still clear. Rob Just says, danger, yay. <laughs> <laughs> In yeah, just under the rocks. lasers. Do you think there's something there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was actually thinking about using Danger as my confirmation name if I was going to get confirmed. Yeah, is that, oh, is that, oh, yeah, is that that's one? exciting and spicy. Oy. You're good. You're 10 meters off. 13. I'm 10 meters. I'm 10 meters. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the ground. Yeah. Yay. All right. And yeah, we can see it in sonar, too. Uh, Those look welded. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, okay. abandon. Run away. Yeah. All right. Coming back up. The edge of this cliff does come up as we're going along as well. So yeah. there's a slight upslope this yeah. way. As Atalanta swings, it would get closer to ground, which is always exciting. 
beautiful uh, shot, though. Yeah, like I said, we have probably about 10 minutes to find one. Yeah, we have about half an hour on bottom still, so. Yeah, yeah but I want to get inland a little bit. Oh, understood. Yeah, all right. Well, let's keep looking along this, just on this side of the ridge. Yeah, it is sloping up a little, isn't it? Yeah, there's yep. some, looks like there are some wee ones there. I think we can get those safely. That's not bad. Yeah, that's going to be all right. You can keep. Bit. Yeah, we I think your delta's good there. Okay. I need a little Roger. bit of slack for the tether here, so. Leaving it there. Are we yeah. a little zoomed in on Mini Zeus? Can we come full wide on that? Five zero meters behind <laughs> zero one Thank five you. degrees. It's a little less scary now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in with the brow. Roger, thank you. Do you want to do it or? I I'm happy for you to do it. Okay, I'll do it then. No problem. You got it. Steph, uh, see. if you, you can oh, look at the eye pass screen now, thing. let me take the 10 meters contour off. I mean, then yeah, these I are a little flat, but I, I just want to get a confirmation of composition. Yeah. Can you look at the screen now? Let mm -hmm. me know when. Go for it, yeah. Can you see how spaced the contours are now? Yeah, what are they at? Yeah, so these are 100 meters. Oh, okay. You could barely so tell that it's a Can you a circle again, please? Yeah, Which exactly. Yeah, and just that little one, just to see. And we're going to sample it? Yeah. Atlanta looks good. When you look at Delta's the red good. part now, you can see that you are just seeing only one line. Can mm -hmm. I get a zoom? So it means that all that range, they are less than, um, like, in terms of the difference, they are less than 100 meters. That's why you are just Downline seeing only on. one line. But when you, when you look to the left, you see more lines because, you know, it's, it's steeper there. It's like, not know, ideal, but... Is, is it better than that one that on the right? Better? Yeah, let's check that other one. There. Actually, one little farther back, a little rounder might be better. Put it down. Oops. Oops. So we don't want that. We don't want that. Can you circle the other one? Well, the, it was back here, but I think that one's too big. It's so either that one or that one back you don't there. Think I think it'll fit, the big one. You will? Okay, yeah. let's get that one then. As long as there's no nothing we are worried about cross-contamination with, then I think it'll fit. We can find a spot somewhere okay. in there. Let's do that one then. Okay. That'll That'll work. Almost has a lava tube look to it. Great, thank you. Roger, can we zoom out? Let's put that in delta. Sorry, please. I gave you sample salvo too easily. Too, whatever this word is, too quickly. Oh my goodness, we are so close to that. Yeah, we are. Um, why don't, actually, hold on. Just hold the arm there a sec. I'm going to go back to dive salvo. And I'm going to come up a little bit, get away from this wall. Thank and you. Even, if you're halted there and secure, we can pause. Come up yeah. on Delta, get up to the top of this wall, and uh, sounds good. One is nine, factor. right? Yep. Delta, we've got it. Okay, coming up now. Roger, coming up on Delta. Okay, I think you should be good to go there. We just hang out here. Gotcha. We'll still have to do some quick move along after, but no problem. Pardon, what was that? I don't know if you're talking to me. I think he's talking to In Delta, bit. please. Delta. Say when. All right. Ooh, it's breezy. I'm lucky. Which yeah. one's Delta? Far back, right. Well, port side, but that's Charlie. Keep going back one more. It'll fit in Charlie, too. You, you already have to two rocks in Charlie, so I'd okay. like to put it in Delta. Okay.
Right there? Yeah, it looks good. Oh, you long halted. Eh. Awesome. Excellent, thanks. You went in? I missed it. <laughs> it went in. Yeah. Good. Okay, nice yeah, try. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it. Yeah, I blinked. <laughs> Yep. And now when you're ready, we can, you know, head up over this and head due east or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can hold position right now. Well, yeah. Chat said that must have been love at first to sight. Uh, Here we go. Jesus. ROV camps. Hello. All right. All right. I thought they say it was first lava at first day sight. <laughs> You missed the lava part, chat. And then, uh, please come up on Delta. Roger, coming up on Delta. Bye, Steep Cliff. Rob, that's a question for you. Pardon? I, I can't hear you. Yes. So we, yep. <laughs> You're talking to the bridge, though. Yeah. So we should just go due east. Yeah. I mean, just just to get inland. Okay. Sounds good. Whatever is easiest to get us over the top of this thing and head. Yeah, that's good with me. Okay. Let All me right. know when you are ready for the. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Yep. Nice. Bridge now. Can you please step five zero meters during zero nine zero degrees? Same speed. Roger, thank you. Shrimp? That kind of brings us to another question that front row can answer. Are they okay to answer a question? Sure. Um, how do you keep track of where the ROVs are compared to the ship? And how far can the ROVs, ROVs be from each other and from the ship? Sorry, Paul, I gotta go. No worries. <laughs> Sorry, Steph, can you come back with the question again? How far, how do we keep track of the ROVs, right? Yeah, so it says how do we keep how do we keep track of where the ROVs are compared to the ship and how far can the ROV ROVs be from each other and from the ship? Well, I'm going to answer how we um, track the ROVs because and I will leave the other one to travel. <laughs> <laughs> so the way we track the um, ROVs, like, I mean, w how we know the position of the ROVs from the ship is um, through the um, USB hell, which is an um, ultra short baseline, is an acoustic positioning system. So that we have um, a transponder on the, on the two ROVs and we have a transceiver on the ship itself. So that's how, so they are communicating acoustically. So just kind of knowing, telling me, like, where are you? Like, and I'm giving you my bearing and distance, and you can calculate where I am. Like, so it's, it's that easy. And then we also have the DVL on the, on Aculis too. That is, currently we are using the USBL because of where we are. We are very far from the bottom. So that's how we are positioning the, um, the two ROVs. And the ship itself, we are using um, GNSS. Please. That's the um, Global um, Navigation Satellite System. That's how we are positioning the ship. So once we know where the ship are like is, and we, are, we can use our USBL to know where the, um, the two ROVs are, then we know where they, the, like where they are in the world. So that's how we do that. So I'll leave the other one to travel. I've got you. Rav Nav up on uh, shot three. Nice. There's another one over just to here, like right here too. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, thanks. This is very similar uh, to the one we found the species of worm on There's it. your squatty. Yeah. Oh, and go away. Thank you. I'll answer how far the ROVs can get from the ship, and I'll leave how far they can get from each other to Annabelle. So, 
I have Rob Nav up on set three. Rob's going to Libo. Yeah, right now we're about 50, 70 meters from the ship. That's pretty normal. Kind of get flung around by the current a little bit. But uh, the farthest we can get from the ship is when we're doing really large, fast moves. If we're moving subsea, moving the ship at a knot, then the or a knot and a half, then the vehicles would be strung out way behind, possibly hundreds of meters. But again, let's just drag through the water. What is this? It's like a really curvy... Yeah, I'll come okay. take a look at it. Give me a sec. I'm Branch Mambo. Uh, go ahead and zoom, please. Oh, um... Can we choose, uh. um... Piece of the, of Take a piece, bamboo? yes. Yeah. Come wide, please. Will this slurp? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can set up, Annabelle. Roger. There's Wait. a squatty on there? Yep. yep. Oh, all right. Wait, you want the coral or just the... Yeah, just I want both. Okay. Sniff and slurp? Sniff and slurp. Is it going to escape if we snip it? I don't think so. Okay. All right. There's two squatties on it. Uh, I think it's enough with the most... Oh, what's happening here? Let's get a good zoom on it before yes, sampling. Yes, Hold on. Uh, Let me know when you're ready for the arm. You want to put it on bubble cam first. Okay, I'm good. <coughs> we'll get the arm out close, then we'll get a zoom, and we'll do a snip. Elias chat says thank you for your explanations. Of course. Is that is that good? That's good. We can zoom in when you're ready, Annabelle. That's great. There's two of them. Yeah. Okay. You can come out, I think, please. So can you advise where you'd like us to snip it? Yeah, like maybe from here. Okay, and where would you, which jar would you like this in? Seven, please. Seven, oh, it's already there. Nice. Right here? That's good, back row. Snip there. A sample in the flush jar. Oh, we do. We can't flush. We can't flush. Can't flush. Oh, well. I know. Roger. No flushing um, for us. Which one should I leave the jars on? What's the least escapey? Hmm. Maybe seven? Roger. Since it just had an unknown, it might be a bamboo, it might be a primnoid. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> the jars are a little bit funky right now. Funky Roger. jar. All right, I should go. All right. Woohoo. Well, okay, just stop moving. We're almost done. Yes. <laughs> now it's time for a gauge check. Yeah. What, what Never time? a dull moment. What time are we headed off the bottom? Uh, in ten minutes. Okay. Please. No. Can I please step another five zero meters in bearing same speed? Oh. Roger. Thank you. You can keep gauge checking if you want. This is the big advantage of having the winch on this side instead of the le your left side. Roger. <coughs> Chat wants to know what's the longest time one of us has spent on the Nautilus. Hmm. Does that include... What if you do two cruises back to back? I think that includes it. I also think if you want to answer who's done the most expeditions, maybe...